Alright, so today we're going to talk about one of the most important properties of the Lagrangian formalism, and it's known as invariance. So what that means is that no matter what coordinate system we use to describe the Lagrangian, so no matter how we write that kinetic minus potential, we're still going to get the same exact equations in motion, just with different variables. They'll describe the same system, and it doesn't matter which coordinates we use. And a lot of times, the coordinates that we use are going to simplify the problem in some way. So for example, if some problem had spherical or cylindrical symmetry, we might want to use spherical or cylindrical coordinates, respectively. So. I still need to define what a point transformation is, which is what's going to be the coordinates that we can use to transform from one system to another system and still have the same type of Lagrangian. And a point transformation is going to take the form where your new coordinate is going to be dependent on your old coordinate and possibly time. Now, if it depends on time, in the Newton formalism, you actually open up a can of worms where you have to worry about things called pseudo-forces. But in the Lagrangian formalism, it's actually really elegant, and those pseudo-forces that you have to add, quote-unquote, are going to pop out naturally. So, notice that there isn't any Q dot... Or anything in here. It's just Q and T. So for example in the last video whenever we were dealing with a spring mass pendulum, the original coordinates that we had used were X and Y. But we were able to describe it using, well, trigonometry. So we were able to determine that x was equal to L plus S sine of theta and that y was equal to L plus S cosine of theta. So we can see here that that would be a point transformation since it was solely dependent on the other coordinates in the system and possibly time. Not time in this example, but just the old coordinates. So if we want to see what happens with the equations of motion, if we write them in a different coordinate system, then we're basically saying that every time we see uh, Q and Q dot in our old Lagrangian, we're just going to substitute them for S and S dot. So in our example up here with the mass spring pendulum, X and Y are going to play the role of Q and Q dot, and then we have our transformation equation that tells us how to substitute back in. So if S is going to be a point transformation from the old variables, then if we plug the new Lagrangian into the Euler Lagrange equation, then we get this thing right here. So to walk this through term by term, we need d over dt of partial L with respect to q dot. So right here we have partial L prime, which we're going to define L prime to be the Lagrangian, but in our new coordinates. So L and L prime are going to be the same thing, just expressed differently. 
So we would have partial L prime over partial S dot, since L, L prime is going to be a function of S, S dot, and T. And then by the chain rule, we have partial S dot over partial Q dot. So that's it for the first term. And then we have minus partial L prime over partial S, since once again, it's a function of S, S. Chain rule tells you you need to take partial S over partial Q. Now, it looks like we made the problem worse, <laughs> and that it's not invariant, but this term is actually going to happen to equal this term. So that's what we need to show. So since S was equal to S of Q of T, so it's a function of Q and T, if we want to take the time derivative of it, which is what we're going to need, since we're going to need to take S dot with respect to Q dot, we're going to need S dot. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we have to take the total derivative of this with respect to time, since we need S dot, which means we need to take partial S over partial Q, and then chain rule tells you to multiply it by Q dot. So dq over dt. And then we have just time by itself, so we have partial s over partial t. And then like I said before, we want to show that partial s dot over partial q dot is equal to partial s over partial q. So we better take partial s dot over partial q dot. And if you do that, then if you look right here, you can take the derivative of each term with respect to q dot. And right here, this term right here, is not dependent on q dot. So it just goes away. It's a fancy constant, if you will. And then right here, so we have partial s over partial q, which is not going to be a function of q dot, multiplied by q dot. So whenever we take the partial derivative of that with respect to q dot, this just goes to 1. And this is just our fancy constant like before. It's not a function of q dot, so it stays there. So we then have partial s dot over partial q dot is equal to partial s over partial q. Now, what does that give us? Well, it means we can substitute back into here, and what we get that is that d over dt partial l prime over partial s dot is equal to, well, we substitute this in, so we get partial s over partial q, and then we have the same thing as before on the second term. So we can factor this common term out of both of these, because we have a partial s over partial q on both of them. So whenever we do that, we get this. And this thing right here should look familiar because now it just looks like the Euler Lagrange equation for L prime s, s dot and t. But what are we missing? Because we're not quite there. And it could be possible that partial s over partial q is zero some point along the path. So what should we do? Well, if we don't want to restrict s and q in any way, so in other words, we don't want this to be zero at all times, because that would be a boring case, which would mean like that the coordinates were the same. You're not transforming it in any ways, in any way. So if we don't want the boring transformation where s is just equal to q, then we need to require that this part on the left is equal to zero. And that's what we want. Because now we just have our Euler-Lagrange equation for L prime and S. And this takes the same exact form of the original system. Because the original system is just replacing all these L primes with L's, 
all the S dots with Q dots and S's with Q's. So we can see that no matter what coordinate system we use to describe the Lagrangian, we're still going to get the same differential equation in the end. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you did. See you in the next video.